writings of Dr. Dave McGee have been studied not just, you know, locally or regionally or but on a world scale. I mean, he, he has uh, set the benchmark for, um, you know, the treatment and rehabilitation of athletic injuries around the world. So when I was going to university, I was, I was studying the writings of Dr. Dave McGee. And so when I came to uh, Alberta in, in 82, worked with the Eskimos, I did my master's, and I got to take a course with Dr. Dave McGee, and, and he asked me to come, he would like to come to camp. Okay, as an observer, as a worker. He started with me and he worked in 1984. In 86, I remember that Peter Miller was a medical trainer then with the Oilers. And uh, he was having some issues with a couple of players. And I, and I said, listen, you know, we've got one of the best physios there is in the city, if not in the province, and it's Dr. Dave McGee. And, uh, and then so he started using, he started using Fibber. And I'll call him Fibber because this is what we know him as, Fibber. And for people who are aware, is Fibber was named by Wayne Gretzky, okay, of all people. Fibber, Fibber the name was, was given to him by Wayne Gretzky. So to everyone, that's how Fibber got the name. Fibber and Dolly McGee, the show that was on years and years ago. The Reynolds Aluminum Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. How Wayne would know, don't have no clue, but that's who named Dr. McGee Fibber. I met Dave in 1989 when I made the national A team in synchronized swimming. The B team is not as privileged to have Dave as their physio, but once you graduate to the A team, you get that privilege. Being a swim team, we often had training camps in warm places, and you all probably know how beautifully pale Dave's skin is. And so he, instead of going out into the hot sun and risking a sunburn, he would Sit, he would find the shadiest place and he would either read a book, he always brought books with us, or he'd sometimes run our music. So he was kind of, because the music system couldn't be in the sun either. So he'd be hiding in a little cave or under a tree or under an umbrella or something. And so the name Shady was born. In 1989, when I came over the Oilers, one of the things that I, I did ask Glenn Sailors when I negotiated to come over is that I wanted Fibber with me. And we've been together ever since. Uh, Glenn Sather back in the days used uh, Dave McGee as a uh, bit of a uh, a bit of a threat. So if if you were hurt, uh, legitimately hurt, you had to get up and, uh, and and go see Dave McGee down at the U of A at about uh, 6 a.m. I think every morning is when he treated guys. And those athletes, uh, fear of God. I mean, I used to be down in the clinic occasionally at, when they were there. And you would see those actual athletes, and they treated David. Whatever he said, they did. These are multi-million-dollar famous hockey players who were yes sir, no sir, to Dave McGee. Fibber, as we call him, um, he was very instrumental in uh, rehabbing six in the morning. Very, uh, very strict when it came to that, but uh, um, a lot of hard work. A lot of thought that went into it, and uh, I owe a lot to him. Oh, he's just instrumental. I can't imagine us you know, getting to the Olympics and having the success we did without him. He was just an integral part of our team, not only for the injury part, because, of course, he's top of his game in that. I mean, he's world-renowned for being able to treat injuries, and, yeah, we had lots. But I found him to be such an amazing mental influence you know, on me. He was just so calming and just so above it all. You know, 13 girls, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. It's a political sport. And he was just able to cut through all that and just have a really good conversation with you and bring you back down to where you needed to be. I remember one game, uh, I had a uh, neck injury and uh, it was really going into a playoff game. and he. I, I didn't think there was any chance that I'd play, and he came in and put me in traction, and I've never really, it was like a miracle worker. So he really, really knew his stuff, and uh, I don't think we truly appreciated back then just how knowledgeable this guy was. One thing that I could always say, and I, was, I can always be proud uh, as a trainer, both in the Eskimos and the Olds, is that I never put a football player or hockey player back on the field that got re-injured in the same area. And I can only say that because of it. Mark Messi and I used to, we used to joke, uh, we called him Yoda, you know, because he, we thought he was brilliant. Uh, fortunately, through my brother, I was aware of 
Dave's accomplishments away from the game, and I don't think many of the players that played for the Oilers uh, uh, knew of Dave's accomplishments. The fact that uh, you know his he had, his books were translated in many different languages, and one of the top sellers of all time, and in um, you know in physiotherapy. We had no idea really he was at that level because you know we just see him as he's our physio, we get him, oh he's shady, and then we met one of his students and somehow you know we're comparing notes and we referred to him as shady and they were appalled that we would use this horrible nickname for the renowned Dr. Dave McGee. We're just like, yeah whatever, it's shady. I was speaking with Kenny Lowe one day and he said, oh no, this guy, this guy makes all kinds of money selling these uh, uh, physio books. I go, what are you talking about? Well, he's the guru in Canada of, of physio. I go, Dave McGee? Uh, the work he's done has been incredible. It's been a paradigm shift. I mean, he, he published the first book of orthopedic physical therapy in the world, as far as we know. Um, that book has gone on to at least the six editions that I'm aware of, that first book. Uh, he's gone on to publish several other books along the same stream that have been you know, not only uh, used throughout Canada and throughout the U.S. and Canada and the English-speaking world, it's been translated into at least four languages that I'm aware of and probably more. Uh, so everyone is anxious when we go to conferences, if Dave is there, everyone wants a picture with the famous Dr. David McGee. That gives you a sense of the impact the man has had on the profession. And he's still, on a daily basis, when I used to teach and TA with him, uh, approached every class and every lecture with nervousness, uh, with humility and, and modesty. And I, I can't tell you how many times I had TA'd in the morning, I'd gone on to do my clinical work and I'd get a call from Dave halfway through the day and he would say, you know, I'm not sure if the students really got that message. What do you think? What was your feedback? So clearly he'd been thinking about it. And that always just amazed me that um, given where he was professionally, he really didn't have to prove anything to anybody. You know, David would teach uh, orthopedic physical therapy at eight o'clock in the morning. And he had a, a fundamental rule that the class will start at eight o'clock and the door will be locked at eight o'clock. So it was always quite fascinating to be in the hallway at around 7.55, 7.58 because you would see students sprinting down the hallway to get into that classroom before the door is locked. So that meant as a TA, I was there for 8 o'clock always. And um, it was very uncomfortable because I would sit at the back of the class close to the door, which of course as he walked in, at 7.59 would promptly be closed. <laughs> and so you can imagine me sitting at the back listening to uh, a barrage of quiet knocks. You know, Judy, let me in. <laughs> and it was very simple. Why he shut that door at eight o'clock? Because he wanted his, his students to realize if you have a patient at eight o'clock, you don't walk in at eight o'clock, okay? You are in there earlier and you're prepared and so that, and, and, and that's, you know, that's one of the things is Dave McGee is. When you talk about the McGee and Dowd chair, I mean, that's, the, that's the, the real cornerstone of it, is taking knowledge and applying it to real world situations. And he, uh, the, you know, not only through his clinic that he does at 6 a.m., but now uh, with Dr. Linda Woodhouse as the McGee and Dowd chair, he's got someone in there who, who sees the vision and is trying to instill that vision across the province and, and again, look at a shift in the way in which we treat people who have musculoskeletal injuries. He said that, you know, the books make it very simple, make it very black and white, and it's not, okay? Black's at one extreme, white's at the other, and unless you stay active, and leave, unless you keep your hands in it, you don't really see this. And that's what I've always admired about David, is how he kept doing it, still being at the university, still teaching at the university, he still ran a clinic from six to eight. And when he started with me and the Eskimos, that was the sort of thing, you went and saw 
Fibber at six o'clock in the morning, and then you got treated by Fibber, and then you came back down to the stadium, uh, and you got treated by me. So the players were always there was no reason for them not to get healthy as quick as possible, you know, because they had the best. Dave, congratulations on your receipt of Order of Canada. Dave, it gives me uh, a great deal of pleasure to congratulate you on this uh, much deserved award. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you. Uh, Congratulations on this tremendous honor. It is well deserved and couldn't happen to a better guy. Dr. David McGee, or better known as Fibber, I just wanted to congratulate you on the Order of Canada. A well deserved uh, for an uh, honest and a humble man. Congratulations, Shady. I'm so happy for you, and you are so deserving of this honor. Thank you for everything you did for us over the years. You are simply the best. Congratulations, Dave. We are so proud of you. You deserve this. You worked so hard for us. You helped us to our silver medal. You deserve the Order of Canada. We are so proud of you. Dave, congratulations on the Order of Canada. I know you may not want to go to a fancy formal dinner to receive your award, but please do and enjoy every minute of it because you deserve it so very much. Dave, your legacy is going to live on forever. You've touched so many lives in so many positive ways. Just from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for all that you've done for me and the athletes that you worked with. Congratulations, Dr. McGee, on your appointment to the Order of Canada. Wow, what an accomplishment. It's amazing to see such devotion to your career. And I know us athletes are very grateful for all your trailblazing work. And I can tell you, I never forgot to keep my core tight while doing my warm-up. You are by far one of my closest friends and closest colleagues on a personal and professional basis. I think you winning and deserving this honor uh, makes a great statement about the person you are. And I would not give up the last 25 years of our history and our friendship for anything. Congratulations. Uh, I may or may not be there uh, to celebrate with your, your faculty colleagues and, and others. Uh, know that um, the award is richly deserved uh, and uh, I cannot thank you enough for your contributions to my own personal and professional development. So Dave, Dr. McGee, many, many congratulations on uh, being named to the Order of Canada, uh, I, along with everyone. I uh, believe it's um, a wonderful tribute to someone who's done so much for our profession and uh, we look forward to many more years of you contributing. All the best. We're all very proud of the work that you've done both for the Faculty of Rehabilitation Medicine, for the University of Alberta as a whole and especially for your profession of physical therapy. Um, wishing you the very best as you celebrate this afternoon this phenomenal accomplishment and uh, I wish I could be with you to, to celebrate it but duty calls and all the best and uh, I hope you and your family um, have a wonderful opportunity to celebrate uh, this uh, great achievement.